Hi, I'm Nandadev. And I've been into photography for about four years now. I started with my dad's 10 year old Canon EOS 600D and about two years ago, I got my own camera, which is the one I'm recording on right now. It's the Fuji X-T4. I've done loads of stuff from portraits, food, fashion, street, but lately I've been kind of bored of it. I feel like I've been taking the same kind of shots no matter what I'm doing. Thus, I finally decided I needed to switch things up. So, I got a disposable camera. I know, very original. Anyway, the reason I got a disposable camera is because I wanted to limit myself in certain cases so that I could put more effort into the creativity of the shots rather than the settings. So with the disposable camera, obviously you can change the aperture, shutter speed or ISO. The only thing you can change is the composition and the, the moment you press the shutter. Also, there's no playback, so I'd have to be very careful of what I'm shooting because I can't go back and make changes. Once it's done, it's done. And tomorrow being St. Patrick's Day, this got here in the perfect time. So I guess I'll see you tomorrow. I just missed my Lewis. Alma opens at 8.30, so we're literally gonna be the first, with the first customer. Yeah. It's been a couple of days since St. Patrick's Day and as you can probably maybe tell, I was sick for a while. Still not recovered, but anyway, I got the photos developed and everything and I did notice some things. Well, firstly, not about the photos. I was so hesitant to take pictures with this. There's been so many times where I pull up the camera and I'm ready for the shot, but I'm like, maybe it's not good enough. Maybe I can find something better. Uh, the other thing is I did not realize the shutter speed on this was one hundredth of a second. And that is not fast enough to freeze normal motion, I would say. And the last thing, this lens is F10. It does make sense considering it's that tiny, but I did not think about that. And uh, yeah, apparently you need a lot of light to actually get some pictures. So most of the pictures I took turned out like this, where you can't see shit. But I did get some good pictures and I'm happy for those at least. Now the biggest problem is I'm done with the 39 exposures. How am I gonna take more pictures? Now I did consider buying a film camera, but that would mean I'd probably have to learn how to develop and scan my own pictures because I don't want to be paying 15, 20 euro every time I need to develop a roll of film. Or since I already have a Fujifilm camera, even though it's digital, it still has film simulations. The only thing is missing is the lens. So I decided let's just take it out. We got it, we got it folks. Okay, kind of, but not really. Yeah. Quick disclaimer for everybody who's taken apart a disposable camera. So disposable cameras have capacitors for the flash that still might hold charge even if you take the battery out. So be careful after you take the battery out or this might happen. Jesus, I should really take the, okay, not, don't touch it with metal. Okay, there we go. Ah, shit! Okay, tiny screws. I can see some, see some tiny screws here. I have these two boys, I don't know which one will fit. And it's finally ready. Now if I do put the lens on the body, the footage is probably really grainy because my ISO is around 10,000 now. But hey, this lens was meant for photos anyway. So let's test it out on the streets of Dublin. See what kind of shots we get.
shoot from the other side. It's like a mean picture, bro. Look at what the sign says. Really? Look at I was taking the picture. <laughs> Emotional support. For me, emotional support can be distance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely swapping lenses now. This shit can't focus for the <laughs> like. The biggest thing I noticed with this lens is that it can't focus very well. Maybe it's just the distance between the lens and the sensor that I need to perfect because right now it can only focus stuff that's like a meter away and then after anything after that it's out of focus, anything before that it's kind of out of focus. But the pictures that come out of this are actually pretty nice. They have a very old analog kind of vibe to them which I really like but I do think it's a nice gimmick to have but at the end of the day I wouldn't be clicking pictures with this. Like the only benefit I see to this is well, the size of your kit would be very small. But other than that, I don't see a point in using this. Like I could get the same effect just with using a normal lens and adding some grain and maybe like some weird contrast or shadows to my pictures like this one. And since I have a crop sensor, I'm not really getting the 35 millimeter focal length for this anyway. So it's more like a 50 mil now. It's actually better for portraits. But other than that, I wouldn't really be using this. So yeah, in conclusion, Make this for yourself, cause it's a cool kind of gimmick lens to have, but real world use case scenarios, close to none. The only situation where you can use this is if you're outdoors, you don't really care about the quality of the pictures and you're fine with the 50 millimeter <laughs> focal length. Other than that, just use a normal lens and just edit it to look like a film shot. You'll get away with it. That's probably all I have to say. So that's the end of this video, but you can keep watching the rest of the photo walk and some of the pictures I took. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Sorry folks, is it okay? Uh, like I'm doing a college assignment, is it okay if I take a few pictures while we're... Yeah? Is that okay with you, folks?